Here we are. I brought along my buddy JD Sawyer to talk about the plants. If you don't know JD, get with it. JD and Tanya Sawyer run the aquaponics source and they're the ones we work with on complete farm systems like this. JD, man. Yeah. Great to see you here Thanks in sunny out. Colorado. Making the trip. I love it. Why don't you tell me what we got going on here and, sure. and you know, you know, I'm a fish guy. So let's talk about the plants. Yeah, so we're putting the fish to work, which is a big part of what we do here. And right. so we're using fish water, of course, to provide nutrients to the plants here. And this system is pretty special because we're big fans of deep water culture, especially on these larger commercial farm systems, because you right. can get a lot of productivity. It's really like a big conveyor belt for your, for your plant system, right? So what's really nice though, in a lot of deep water culture systems are traditionally ground level systems. Right, yeah. Right? This one, as you can probably tell, is waist high. Right, so easy to work with. Super easy to work with. So really, really love that feature because this is the bulk of your day-to-day -day work is seeding, transplanting, and of course, harvesting the crop. And so to be able to do that comfortably at waist height is really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, we talked about our backs yeah. uh, getting a little bit older and yeah. picking the kids up. Right. Um, but I've done a lot of leaning down, so I, I, I really do like this. Um, yeah. So what varieties are we looking at in front of us? Yeah, so we have a couple different types of uh, head lettuces here, some salanovas, some bibs. Uh, we've got some romaine lettuce right in front here. Very so nice. these may have another week or two to go. And right now we're in the middle of January in Colorado uh, in the greenhouse here too. So a little bit lower light level. So you may have slower growth this time of year. Hmm. In the summertime with more light, this will probably pick up quite a bit more and really be able to turn this. This is actually an eight foot wide by 72 foot long system too so you probably produce anywhere from i'd say three to five hundred maybe even up to six hundred heads a week as long as you're managing that wow. rotation of seeding transplanting and, and harvesting now if i was to supplement light would i be able to maintain that type of production year round absolutely yeah, yeah. so you could even have a, a more consistent uh, production and potentially even shorten that that yield time or that grow time and be able to produce that much more crop um, and not right. be reliant on the sun or maybe snow covering the roof from time to time that sort of thing right regional things we, we yep. all have to think about aquaponics is something that can really be done anywhere but there are so many regional specific things that we have to think about so why don't we talk a little bit about that in Colorado what types of things do you have to keep track of versus maybe Louisiana, where we are? Well, one of the advantages to Colorado uh, versus maybe, you know, down New Orleans, down yeah, south, yeah. it's not very humid up here. No, okay? it, it's and not. <laughs> humidity can actually be a real problem, particularly for these leafy green kind of crops here. Mm -hmm. So it's very dry in, in Colorado. So a lot of our greenhouse systems use like evaporative cooling walls. I see that. Um, yeah, to help yeah. keep it cool, yeah, keep yeah. some moisture in the air, that sort of thing. So that's definitely a huge difference between, you know, us and you, right? Because we're in January in Colorado. Yeah the sun's beating down in my face yeah. I'm feeling the heat yeah I mean I really am yeah we get over 300 sunny days a year so that's one Ooh, of our, our big uh, calling cards if you will out in Colorado so this time of year can actually be one of the best times of year in the greenhouse even if it's cold outside right as long as we got some sun it can be perfect 65 70 degrees in the greenhouse without much supplemental heating at all in fact, the fan's running right now to cool it off. Uh, yeah, I see so that. There, I see that. That happens too. You know, we got a 50 degree day out there. So, so let me ask you this. Let me, yeah. let me be clear about this. Two cubic foot filter, two 300 gallon tanks, handful of uh, pounds of feed per day, and we are producing enough waste to grow all of this. How do you size something like that? Is it, you know, pounds of feed that's go into an aquaculture system and when you decouple, you use a feed rate ratio? Yeah, so, so we really go back to one of our experience through running these farms over the years. We've looked at some of the historical research by mm -hmm. folks like Dr. Ricosi going back to the University of the Virgin Islands sure. systems and so sure. forth. So we do look very closely at feed. So when we typically design a system, we're looking at the, the overall square footage of the plant system and the type mm -hmm. of plants are gonna 
uh, and grow. So we've got a lot of leafy greens here. And then we take our calculations of how many grams or pounds of feed we need per square meter to accommodate the nutrient requirements of the plants. And so it's really all about what the fish are eating, the waste they're producing, and that expected daily feed ratio to make sure we're providing all the nutrients, right? I, I love it, I love yeah. it. And, and as far as waste from a system like this, is there anything wasted? Zero. Yeah, especially- So all inputs. Yeah, so we're providing feed, the filter is doing its job, and then we can even extract some of the solid discharge from that filter and remineralize that and then reintroduce that into the system, which is actually what allows us to even drive the daily feed rate uh, that much lower because we're just getting everything we even can more efficient. Out, of the, out of the fish waste, right. And Colorado being a state where water may not be as readily available as some places in the deep south, Yeah, having that water resource really managed that way and growing this many crops, yeah. so would you say 78 by 70? Eight, wa eight foot wide, 72, 72 foot long. 72 long. Yeah, there's over 2,000 whole spaces or plant spaces in the system. And zero waste. Don't discharge any water. That's important <laughs> everywhere, not that just really, here, right? That is, that yeah. absolutely is. Yeah, so it's a pretty cool, very productive system. When you couple it all together and use the fish and the plants together, it is really one of the most efficient ways to grow Anything yeah. else that we need to discuss on a system like this? I, I'll tell you, I, we're real happy with this. We love being able to do this, particularly at waist height, which is great. And one of the things that you do a lot of day in and day out is scouting for pests too. And right. just be able to, to look right down here and be able to be this close to the crop is really, really important just to look for nutrient deficiencies. Again, scout for pests, do all of the, the activities involved with the planting system. Um, this is a really nice way to do it. I love it, man. I love cool. it. JD, looking great, man. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thanks for coming.